Allow it, Mom. Ruth, grab your Bibles this morning. Coin your Biblia. Psalm chapter 19. Good job, Christy. Good job. Psalm chapter 19. We're going to read verses 12, 13, and 14. English una vasaika duha. Psalm chapter 19, verse 12. Malipay kong anam mo, dali karong buntag. Salam sa inyong faithfulness. Psalm 19, verse 12. Kung nana, say amen. Tanaman ng dog, palihog. Tanaman ng dog. Psalm chapter 19, verse 12. English yung nabasay kaduha. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Besaya. Kinsa ba ang makasabot sa iyang mga sayop? Hinloan mo ako gikan sa tinago ng mga sayop. Pugni, nga, pugni ang imong sulugoon usab gikan sa mapangahason ng mga sala. Kinsa nakasabot sa pulong mapangahason? Pangahas? Mang, mapangahason. In English, first here, it's presumptuous. We'll talk about it in a few minutes. Balik na, pugni ang imong sulugoon usab gikan sa mapangahasong ng mga sala. Ayaw itugo na sila makabaton o pagdumala ibabaw kanako. Dayon, ako mahimong tulid o ako mahimong inosente gikan sa dakong paglapas. Itugo na ang mga pulong sa akong baba o ang pagpamalandong sa akong kasing-kasing Madawa diha sa imong pananaw o ginoo akong kusog o akong manunubos. The title of my message this morning comes from verse 12. Secret faults. Tinago ng mga sayo. Secret faults. Heavenly Father, thank you for today, Lord. Thank you for your goodness to us. Now, Lord, you know I'm a little weak this morning. I need your help. I need your strength. God, would you give me a clear mind to make the truth clear this morning in English as well as Messiah? God, would you help me, Father, to give our people what they need today? God, I need your strength. I need a supernatural push this morning, Father. Would you give power to... My words, Lord, as I try to proclaim your words, Father, please use me. Holy Spirit, I yield myself to you. Guide me, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. When I was in Bible college, so they had not like Bible college, Paco, I had a good friend. His name was John, and good friend, good guy, loved the Lord. And I go masa jos, and I go masa tao, masa mga tao. He's just a good guy, very passionate young man. He and I, and and brother, and and Mom Ruth's brother Micah, ang manghod ni Mom Ruth yung alin si Micah. I and brother Mike were very close in college, so ujud me. And uh, ako, uksi Maika, uksi John, kitang kaming tulo, uh, na, 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 uh, what's the word, nagkauban mi sa ministry. We all worked in the same ministry together. And we worked in a ministry that we called the chapel ministry. And the chapel ministry, sa Domingo sa hapon, nag, nag, nagbiat mi sa simbahan sa, 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 sa main church, uh, First Baptist Church of Hammond. And we went to Chicago, or for us, south suburbs of Chicago. 
I mean, you know where Chicago is. Come on, Chicago, that's common. Come on, kids, like a dog, come on, Chicago. You know about Chicago. Come on, y'all are sleepy. How many of you have heard of Chicago? Come on, do not sit there and lie, all right? And uh, he had a bad attitude, and the sermon hasn't even started yet. And <laughs> here we go. Um, but anyway, we would go soul winning in Chicago, actually, the south, south suburbs of Chicago. Chicago, just like you go to Manila, it's a metro Manila. Right? It's kind of like that in Chicago, except Chicago is the one big city, and then there's lots of little cities around it. We were in what they called the South Suburbs, and uh, Harvey, Markham, uh, Midlothian, I forget all the others. But anyway, we would go visiting. We would start a church on Sunday afternoon in some of the more dangerous areas of Chicago, and, um, and the area we were in was mostly black American community. You understand when I even say black American, I'm a negrito, and, um, the, the, and uh, I loved it. I loved what we did. I was a children's pastor, I was a pastor of my father, and I loved it. I loved the ministry. I loved it. I loved the black people in America. And I, I just, I, not, not, what's the word? I can't think of the right word, but we got along very well, and I, I loved the work. But it was sometimes very dangerous. Lots of gangs, lots of drugs, lots of crime, and so it could be dangerous at times. And we would go soul winning. Ako, see Brother Micah, see Brother John, like soul winning me, like Kauban me, so soul winning. And, and uh, it was great. I love going soul winning with Micah. I love going soul with John. John was one of the most passionate people I know. I, I should I say, I knew. Passionate guy, should I just, you understand the word passion? Uh, he never did anything halfway. He did everything 100%. He just, he, shani hot, like saying, cussing, cussing, satanan. Right, Mom Ruth? Everything. He was kind of like your pastor. Sometimes he would get very upset. Sometimes your pastor, I get very fiery. Sometimes I get upset. But can I say, listen, the reason John got upset was because he cared. And I'll say this too. I would rather have a person who sometimes I have to calm them down. I would rather have a person like that than a person who just doesn't really care. You understand what I'm saying? Mas mayo kung tao masuko sa hay masubra sa yung sa yung passion. He love it too. All right, calm down. It's gonna be okay. John, calm down. Remember one day he came to us in the dining hall. He was so mad. I don't remember why he was mad, but he was so upset. I don't can't believe this happened. I'm gonna kill it. I'm gonna kill it. I killed John Nicole. And he's so upset. He wasn't really gonna kill him. That's just an English expression, okay? And um, he was so upset. And I said, I said, John, look. If you go over there and start a fight with him, what's that going to help? And he said, I know. That's why I'm here talking to you. <laughs> but he was passionate. He was fearless. I have never seen a guy who was just unafraid of everybody. It's like, I remember one day, we're soul winning. John and I, I don't remember where Michael was. We'd probably left him by himself somewhere. And uh, but obviously, John, we went to a house. And we had to go to the back door of the house. And we go to, in America, you don't say ayo. You just knock on the door, all right? So, like, tok tok me. And I looked down, and there was a flower pot. Everyone wants a flower pot, diva. And in the flower pot, was a, wasn't, it wasn't flowers. You know where this is going, don't you? It was green and big leaves. I'd never seen that kind of plant before. So I didn't, I didn't think anything of it. I knock on the door, I saw the plant, and, and John goes, Brother Mike, that's marijuana. He said, they're growing marijuana in their backyard. I said, okay, well, let's, uh, that's not our problem, I guess. And I knocked on the door again. John reaches in his pouch. He has a special tool on his back. It's like pliers and a knife and all these different things. He pulls that thing out and opens up the pliers. John, what are you doing? He takes those pliers and he cut the plant down. 
I said, John, you're going to get us killed. What are you doing? John, this is gang country. Do you want to die? He said, they shouldn't be growing marijuana here. There's kids here. John, I think we need to go to the next house. He wasn't afraid of anybody. Mr. Passion. By the way, I thank God for Christians who have passion. Christian and I zeal, excitement for God. That was John. I've told this story before. Some of you might remember it. I remember one Saturday morning. Every Saturday morning, I could see Micah and John coming to look at the front entrance of the college, and we. We'd take my car and we'd go to the ministry meeting. I mean, so many meeting dito sa simbahan para sa among ministry. And one day we got to the front. Well, I John, where's John? So we went to his boarding room, his his dorm room, we would call it, and in the dormitories there at the college. And we knocked on the door, and his roommate was there, pero John was not there. And I looked at his bed, and all this stuff was gone. Ang panani ang gamit na wala. He moved out. Nibalhin na siya. Gikan sa yung dormitory room. And I was confused. What's what's going on? What's ang problema? What would happen? Now, I thought, okay, well, maybe he decided to move home. He could do that. His parents were members at the church there. So, ang yan kinikanan, gapuyo doon lang. So, pwede siya mag-ulit, mag-puyo sa balay, mag-skwela gihapon. So I didn't think a lot about it. It's just, it's strange. Wala siya nag-text. Wala siya nag to. Nothing. He hadn't done anything. All day long, Saturday, we didn't hear anything from John. We went visiting all day like normal. About 7, maybe 7.30, 8 o'clock at night, I got a call on my phone. That means we were either married or engaged already. I got a call on my phone. And I looked, and it was another good friend of mine, Brent Gullo. He also worked in our ministry with us. He was the youth pastor. I was the children's pastor. And I said, hey, Brent, what's up? Because he was looking for John. And he said, uh, Brother Mike, uh, I found John. He said, he said, I think you should talk to him. He said, okay, let me talk to him. He put John on the phone. And I said, hey, John, how you doing, man? We've been worrying about you. He said, oh, I'm fine, I'm fine. Where are you? It doesn't matter. What, do you, what happened today, John? He said, I, I, I've had enough. What's the word? Sumpul nako? Sumpul nako. Igot na, I've had enough. What, what are you talking about, John? What, where, what, what's going on? And the more I talked to him, the more I realized he doesn't sound like John. Ang iyang pagastoria, dali claro. His speech wasn't clear. And I said, John, have you been drinking, John? He said, a little, Gamayra. What? John, you're a preacher in Bible because what are you doing now? I, I, I have never in my life been so shocked. I knew some guys in college, and if you told me they went out and got drunk, the liko must surprise up. Now I'm a roommate, not going Kalibutan Honjud. But not John. John loved God. John loved people. He loved the ministry. And he was drunk. I said, John, what's an ball? What's going on, John? I didn't know what to say. I stumbled around a little bit and I, I finally just said, John, why? Now come on. I'm, we're not talking about a guy who used to drink. Maybe he'd had a drunk drink here and there, but he grew up in a Christian school. He wasn't an addict. Well, that's like a he could buy an anime, but nothing gamaira. Why? And he started telling me what had happened. But it didn't really matter. He was drunk. He had quit Bible college. 
As far as I know, he never went back. In the text verse we read a few minutes ago, David said, Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Pug ni ang imong sulugo on usab gikan sa mapangahason ng mga sala. That day, one of my good friends, sukod ka ay ng higala nako. He committed a presumptuous sin. Naghimo siya sa I lost the word. Mapangahason na sala. What is a presumptuous sin? What is mapangahason? Presumptuous sins are the the sins that shock other people. The sins that other people would be afraid to do. That's what presumption means. It means you do something on Glaita Magtan Almosulte. Who the Koma Maghimoana and Hadlo Koma Himoana. There are certain sins I would be afraid to do. And if someone chooses to do them, we would say they dared. Presumptuous is the idea of how I many you know the word dare? Nak dare shah. That's the idea of mapangahason. Audacious. Daring. Doing the thing that other people will look and say, whoa! What's the phrase in the sign? Angaba delit magsaba. That's an odd, that is a presumptuous sin. It's the sin that shocks everybody else. What kunagatunga ikana himona? I can't, John, I can't believe you did that. Does anybody know the name John Newton? Does anyone know the song Amazing Grace? John Newton, right? That's his name, right? Just double check. I didn't have, actually double check last night as I wrote my outline. John Newton wrote the song Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Something in your wretch. Just an evil, worthless person. He said, I was a wretch. That's say grace that saved a wretch like me. There was a reason he called himself a wretch. John Newton was a wicked, evil man. He was a tr slave trading ship captain. Shang captain sa barko nga nagbiyahe nga to sa Africa, nagkuha sa mga tao sa Africa, mga negrito, o nagdalat nila nga to sa US or nga to sa, sa Britain. I don't remember if he ever took them to Britain or the US lang. But he would take slaves, make, take black people as slaves, and sell them in America. Nakuha siya sa iyang ginansya, pinaagi sa pagbaligya sa mga tao. He was a wicked, vile man. He hated God. Many times he would stand on the deck of his ship and blaspheme God. Nice move, blaspheme, pasipala, pasipala. Is that the word pasipala? He would blaspheme and curse God's name and then dare God, if you're really God, kill me. Now listen, sailors at that time were not known as being good godly men. Most of them were wicked, blasphemous, dirty mouth, hugang pagastoria. Pero bisan ang mga kauba ni John Newton na tanong niya na kasulti, Wow! Di juk ko mohimo ana. That's a presumptuous sin. The sin that other people look and say, I wouldn't do that. I can't believe you said that. Wak ko nakatoy ka na himo ana! Here in our text verse this morning, David says to God, Lord, please... 
Hold me back. He says, keep back thy servant. He's talking about himself. She's saying, God, hold me back from committing presumptuous sins. God, please, don't let me do those things that would shock, shock other people and even shock myself. Don't let me do the things that those wicked sins that other, we call big sins. God, I don't want to do it. I don't want to. Why? Look back at verse 13. Look at verse 13. Why was David so worried about presumptuous sins? Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Look at the next sentence. Let them not have dominion over me. Ayaw itugong asila makabaton o pagdumala ibabaw kanako. David was saying, Lord... I know what sin can do to the life of a person. God, I don't want sin to take control of my life. You listen to me? When a Christian allows presumptuous sins into their life, those sins make you a slave very quickly. Dali ka ay o mahimong ka ulipon. Mawala ang kagawas nun. David said, God, I don't want to be a sin, a, a, a slave to sin. Ayaw mo tugo ang mga salat mo, control sa akin. Kid, what, you listen to me, young people? You think you can play with sin? You think, I can, I can do it a little bit? You listen. Sin always. You start out thinking, ako makakontrol sa salat. Pero dali ka ay o Oh, I can stop anytime I want. Then why haven't you yet? Because you can't. Sin makes you a slave. Sin makes you a slave. David said, God, I want to be able to serve you with my life. I don't want sin to control me. Did I read that verse in Messiah? Did I read it? Yes, I did. That's the boss. Take Dumala, Sean Bosin. The supervisor, the manager. God, David was saying, God, I don't want sin to be over me. So David said, God, please, poke me ko gikan sa mapangahasong ang mga salat. You look right here at me, young people. You can't pray that prayer if you are consistently putting yourself in a position of temptation. God, mo at the cause of this go, please hold. Poke me ko gikan sa dakong salat. God can't answer that prayer because you're putting yourself in temptation. That's not God's fault. That's your fault. You know, put me kogi kanta fornication. Something I come Well, I'm, I'm going to let my boyfriend touch me, but don't let me commit fornication. It doesn't work that way. David said, "God, please hold me back." But I want you to notice just one word in verse 13. Listen to me. This is very important. We need to remember every word in the Bible is on purpose. Will I subra? Will I kulang? We believe God gave his word perfectly and then preserved it for us. So if that's true, ang tanan pulong sa Biblia importante, if God put it in there, there's a reason. Nairason. Look with me in Psalm 19, verse 13 again. We're going to look at just one word. Keep back thy servant. What's the next word? Y'all see it? Keep back thy servant what? 
also from presumptuous sins. Pugni ang imong sulugoon o sab or put. Also, two. Gikan sa makpangahasong ng mga sala. Wait a minute. Also, keep back thy servant also. That means there's something else. Diba? You see, si David, wala siya nagkabalakara kabahin sa dakong sala. Sala nga hitaw dako. You understand? There's no big sins and small sins, but some sins have much bigger consequences than others. You understand that? Kung mahubo ka o mag-drive 100 kilometers an hour dito sa lawaan, you're going to crash into the rotunda and die. Sin is sin, but many some sins have much bigger consequences. You see, David said, the big sins, dili ko nagkabalaki kabayan nila ra na pailain. Because he said, keep me back from those also, meaning there's something else I want you to keep me back from. Where, what is that? Look back at verse 12. See, David, wala siya nagkabalakara kabayan sa dak, sa lak ng kita, kita ng tao, dako. He wasn't just worried about the big, you know what our problem is? Do you know why Christians commit the big sins? Because we worry about those, but we don't worry about the ones in verse 12. Look at verse 12. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from, what's the next two words? Secret faults. Kinsa ba ang makasabot sa iyang mga sayop? Hinloan mo ako gikan sa tinago ng mga sayop. Do you see the other kind of sins God David was worrying about? What were they? Unsang Latin class in had look siya, nagkabalak ka siya kabahin sa unsang man. Secret faults. Tinago ng mga sayop. Tinago ng mga sala. David was worried about not just the big ones. Whoa! The shark lid! David, how did you do that? John, unsang mo, nanunsang ka! How could you do that? He wasn't just worried about that. He was worried about the little ones. Wala siya nagkabalak ka kabahin sa dahong sala ra. Nagkabalaka siya po at kabahin sa mga sala na tinago. Watch. Kanang sala sa kasing-kasing o kuna-una. Sins of the heart and the mind. Listen to what I'm about to say right here. The big sins that shock everyone always follow many small sins of the heart and the mind. Ang takong sala, masyak ang takong sala. Oh! Naburos na siya! Ah! Kana, listen. Kana mo sunod sa daghang tinago ng mga sala. Are you listening? When we hear about secret sins... We automatically think about people who do wrong and then try to hide it. You know, I don't talk about secret sins. I don't talk about the people who are in the world. They are in the world. Every man sitting in jail right now has one goal in life hide his sin. You know what I'm talking about? I don't want the judge to know. Right? That's his goal. Every backslidden Christian. Has one goal. Hide my sins. Here comes the pastor. Oh, I'm Pastor Payo. Turn off the dirty TV show before Pastor walks in the door. Hurry up, hide the beer. Are you listening? music, Pastor Nadare. I remember walking in there. <laughs> dugay na, dugay na. We had some young people. That, they're not in our church now. They used to be. I, I don't think any of them are now. And they were practicing a K-pop song, dancing by the motor cab next to the basketball hoop. <laughs> here comes Pastor Mike just walking in. <laughs> and <laughs> it was great. 
See, when I walk into that situation, I never try to embarrass the person. They're already embarrassed all by themselves. I don't have to say anything, and I don't. But I try to pretend I don't notice. If I walk up and a guy's got a cigarette, and I, when I see a guy and he's standing, he's got his hand behind his leg like that, I know he has a cigarette. Then he walks around behind the motorcycle. I know what he's doing. But I pretend I don't notice. Because I'm not, I'm not God. That's not my job. I teach the Bible and I preach and I, do what, I preach what God wants me to preach. But I'm not out there spying on people. I visit them because I love them. But I walked up to that. I'm walking towards the motor cab. And there was a guy sitting there on the motor cab. And I could hear him. People think the pastor's deaf, you know. I could hear the, the K-pop song on the phone. And I see them dancing. <laughs> the guy sitting on the motor cab. He's going, Pastor Mike. Pastor Mike. Pastor Mike. <laughs> hey, girls. Come on, come Oh, Pastor Mike. <laughs> Can I just remind you of something? Even if Pastor Mike doesn't see it, God does. Shang magohukam diko, akong mesenhero ra. I just preach. But everybody who's backsliding, they think I need to hide it from the pastor. But that's not the kind of sin David's talking about here. When he says, cleanse thou me from secret faults, he's not talking about those kinds of sins. What kind of sins is he talking about? Look at verse 12 again. Look at the first sentence. Who can understand his errors? Kinsaba ang makasabot sa iyang mga sayo. Si David, wala siya nagastorya dari kabahin sa mga salat na gitago. Siya nagtago yung salain. Listen na. English or not. He was talking about sins in his life that were hidden from him. Did you see it there? Who can understand his, we could say, own errors? Do you know what David was saying? He's saying, Lord, nakasabot ko nga bisan karon na mga sala sa akong kinabuhi o wala ko gabalo. He was saying, Lord, I know there's sin in my life because I have sinful flesh and I'm sure, Lord, there's some sin in my heart and in my mind right now and I don't even know it's sin. Wala siya nagastorya kabahin sa mga sala nga siya nagtago ikan sa laing. Nagastorya siya kabahin sa mga sala na ginatago sa iyang kabuleon sa laing na ginatago ikan kaniya. Did I say that correctly? David was saying, Lord, kung naay sala, kung naay sayo sa akong kinabuhi karon, ganahan ko nga ikaw mo pakita na ko. Lord, if there's something in my life that's wrong, I want you to show it to me if I don't already see it. There's another verse that's very similar to that. Turn to Psalm 139. Prio, prio, nila, ni ining duaka verses. Kauban Psalm 139, verse 23. I'm going to get a little water. Psalm 139, verse 23. Kung nana, say amen. Give you another second. Psalm 139, verse 23. Here we go. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. Susiha ako, O Jos. O kibaloi ang akong kasing-kasing. Sulai ako o kibaloi ang akong mga huna-huna. Verse 24. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. O tanawa kon aduna bay bisan unsa nga daw tong adalan din hi kanako. O tultuli ako diha sa dalan nga walay katapusan. 
David was saying, Lord, I want you to show me the sin in my life that I cannot see. Ginoo, ganahan ko nga ikaw mo pakita na ko sa salat, mga salat sa akong kinabuhi nga dali makita na ko. Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I'm such a sinner that I don't even understand all my own sins. Ginoo palihog, ipakita na ko. Kung nai sa lahat sa akong kinabuhi, kung nai kung problema, kung nai sa iyo, Paliho, ipakita na ko aron ako pwede magmatarong sa akong sayop. Lord, I want you to show me the sins in my life that I think are small. Oh, they're not the big presumptuous sins. Ang salat nga ako magbati ka mayra. I want you to show me the sins that are hidden. I want you to show me the sins that I've gotten used to. Ganan ko, ikaw mo, pagkita na ko sa mga sala na naandan na ako, naandan na ako, ako naandan na, naandan na ko. Nga naman, tungod ganahan ko mo sugid nila o mga ayaw pagpasailo. Ganan ko magmatarong uban ni mo. Lord, if there's something wrong in my life, I want to know. Can I tell you something? That's one of the purposes of preaching. God uses preaching to show you sins in your life you've never even noticed. I can experience it when you go to Simbahan and Pastor Mike will start to go and all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit will be able to help you. The Holy Spirit pricks your heart and says, you've been doing that, haven't you? I didn't think about that, Lord. I never thought about it. I can experience it when God uses preaching sometimes to show us our secret faults. David said, Lord, I want to be right with you. Ganan ko magmatarong uban ni mo, palihog, ipakita na ko sa mga sala sa akong kinabuhi na akong dili makita. Show me the sins in my life I can't see so I can get them right. I once heard a man teaching about this concept teaching about sins in your life and listen to me every christian here today i don't care how close you are to god you have sins in your life that you don't even recognize yes you do that's called christian growth if if you had no sins left to fix we all have growing to do but i heard a man teaching about this duga and i think it was in seventh grade he was not my pastor different man and he was teaching about the idea of you have sinned. And he called those areas of sin blind spots. You understand what a blind spot is? But Carrie knows what a blind spot is. I'm sure your bus had some blind spots. A blind spot is the idea of you're driving, like, like drive past the jeepney, maglantaw sa mirror, na area makita ni mo, kung maglantaw, what's your name, maglingi, the word for this. But there's an area back here that delete makita ni mo, right? And there's an area directo luyo sa jeepney delete makita ni mo. You know what I'm talking about? That's called a blind spot. Ang lugar ang delete makita ni mo. So he called these areas ang mga bahin sa tungkina buhi. He called them blind spots. Kung na ko ay dirt then eh delete makita na ko. You know? I need my wife to say, Pastor, Pastor, she doesn't call me Pastor Mike, she calls me, hey babe. And um, I need my wife to say, uh, babe, your shirt's dirty. But this man taught that Christians should go to each other and say, I want you to show me the blind spots in my life. I don't think that's biblical. I don't see that in the Bible. David did not go to his wife or his counselors and say, will you show me the sin in my life? Who did he go to? God. I don't think it's a biblical concept to say, I want you to tell me what you see wrong in my life. Maybe one person, if you truly trust them, but let's just be honest. Most Christians, kulang ang atong tact. You understand the word tact? We're not good at saying things gently, and we hurt people's feelings. 
nga dili ituyo, God is much better at showing us our blind spots. I don't believe Christians should do that. It's dangerous. It's very dangerous. David went to God and he said, God, kung naay salat sa akong kinabuhi, kung naay garbo sa akong kasing-kasing, kung naay kasuko sa akong kinabuhi, kung naay kapait, bitterness or anger, I want you to show it to me. I want you to show it to me. David said, God, kung naay garbo sa akong kasing-kasing, ganahan ko mukatpon, makabalo. Kung naay anger or bitterness in my heart, I want to know. Kung naay envy, kasina, Covetousness, kaibo, sa akong kasing-kasing, paliho, ipahibulo na ko. Kung nai kadalo, kasuko, malice, malice is ang tingo ha sa pagsakit sa lain, malice, desire to harm others. God, David said, please God, if you see malice in my heart, show it to me. Lord, if there's worldly thinking in my mind, kung na ko ay huna-huna sa akong bring, kalibutan hon, Lord, if there's unrighteous thoughts in my mind, show it to me so I can change it. I don't puede upson na, upson na ko. Upson, di ba? Upson, yes. Change. Lord, if there's something wrong in my heart, something wrong in my thinking, show it to me. Say, Pastor Mike, how do you know David was worried about his thinking? Look back at your Bible. Look at verse 14. And now in verse 14, he goes back to the idea of thoughts. Psalm 19, 14. Let the words of my mouth and the what? Meditation of my heart. That's your thoughts. Meditation in the science, it means balik balik. It means think about it over and over and over. That's meditation. Okay. Panaglita. Here's what happens. Nay pakiglalis. Kasi nakay pakiglalis sa tao. Sa imong sawa, sa imong bana, sa imong silingan, sa imong iksoot, sa imong kinikan, sa imong anak. You have an argument with someone. And you walk away from that argument and you're angry. Ognasuko ka. And for the next three days, you keep playing that argument back through your mind like a like an mp3 file on your phone next book mo na maghuno huna balik sha na so dani ako na so dani tapa ko na so dani kaniya nga na mo nga na mo wala ko na kuno huna nga na so dani i could have said this man i missed it why didn't i next time i'll say this and you play that conversation over and over do you know what that's called meditation meditation pag pamalandong Huna huna balik balik. David said, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Ito nga ang mga pulong sa akong bapa o ang pagpamalandong sa akong kasing-kasing madawa diha sa imong pananaw o ginao akong kusog o akong manunubos. Ginao ganahan ko nga akong hunahuna sakto. I want my thoughts to be right. Lord, if my thoughts aren't right, show me and help me make them right. Kwa kung huna huna delit sakto ipakita na ko o tabangi ko ng magmatarong nila. You look right here at your pastor. Every big sin, the ones we call big sins, presumptuous sins. All of them, all of them, start up here. Tanan, but start, Simon, huna huna. Before a husband or a wife breaks their marriage vows and cheats on their wife or cheats on their husband, first they think about it for a long time. Wicked thinking always precedes 
wicked acts. Did you hear what I just said? Ang dawt ang ahunahuna kanuna. Sige, sige, wala exceptions. Ang dawt ang ahunahuna mo una sa dawt ang buha. So let's go back and look at Psalm 19, 12, and 13 together. Psalm 19, verse 12 and 13. Psalm 19 in your Bible. An hour. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. You see the connections between secret faults and presumptuous, I'm sorry, secret faults and presumptuous sins. They're together. Kinsa ba ang makasabot sa iyong mga sayop? Hinloan mo ako gikan sa tinagong ng mga sayop. Pugni ang imong sulugoon usab gikan sa mapangahason ng mga sala. Listen to what I'm about to say right here. Before any Christian commits a, I lost the word in English. Presumptuous sin. So wala pa si bisang kinsang Christian maghimo sa mapangahasong na sala. There is a time period of secret sins in the heart and in the mind. And if we want to avoid the presumptuous sins, we must allow God to show us the secret sins. Kinahanglan ta mo tugo ng ang Diyos mo pakita na to sa mga tinago ng mga sala. Sins of the heart. What, what's that, Pastor Mike? Wrong desires. Sala nga tinguha. Wrong feelings. You know, many feelings are sin all by themselves. Bisan walay buha. It's past Friday, but the Elvin preached in our school chapel to the kids. He preached ang kasina maoang Sala. What is casina? I've lost it in English. Jealousy, envy. Envy is sin. Wrong feelings. Pride. You know the amazing thing about pride is pride can sneak into your heart and you don't think you're pride, proud. You know, puede ka mahimong garbo sa jod of maghunhuna, wala ko problema sa garbo. Pride, anger, malice, bitterness. We're talking about sins of the heart. Ang salat na delit makita, and many times we don't even recognize them in our own lives. Pusay delit ta magmatnon sa atong kagulingon kasingkasi, but also sins of the mind, wrong thinking, worldly thinking. Be careful what shows you watch on TV. If you're getting advice from worldly TV shows, you're not going to make good decisions in your life. You need God's wisdom, not man's wisdom. Wrong thinking. What other kinds of sins of the mind? Here, here we go. How about this one? Thoughts of comparison. Ang huna huna kabayin sa pagtandi. Does that compare? Pagtandi, magkampara? You listen to me very carefully. When you find yourself comparing yourself to other people, you are in a dangerous, dangerous spot. The Bible says they that compare themselves among themselves are not wise. Sila nga magtandi sa usag-usa, dili maalamon. Comparison thoughts always leads to pride or discouragement. Always. Always. Pride or discouragement. Kung magkampara ko sa tao na mas na mas ubos na ako, ako magbati, mas may ko kay kaniya, mas may ko, garboso na ako. If I compare myself to someone who I feel is above me, what happens? Ma discourage ko. But either way, the results are bad. And the root cause of comparison is always pride. There is no other reason to compare except the reason of pride. Yeah. 
wrong thoughts. Ang huna-huna sa pagtandi. How about this? Evil surmisings. Do you remember what evil surmisings means? I preached a sermon months ago on evil surmisings. It means, surmise means, mag-develop ka sa opinion, kapahin sa lain, bisang gilimitado ang evidentia. It means, I don't know all the facts, but I've already decided that I think bad of you. I've already decided, think pakarong ing nun ka. Nag decision na ko, bisan wala ko kabalo sa tanan details, I'm going to assume, I'm going to surmise that I know enough and I don't think you're a good person. That's called evil surmising. And it's wicked. And the worst thing about it is it, it destroys you. Not the person you're thinking bad about. You see, when Pastor Mike preaches about outward sins, that's a little easier because most of us only have a few, small, few outward sins. But when we talk about sins in the heart, everybody gets quiet. David said, Lord, ganan kong maglikay sa dakong sala, sa mapangahasong na sala. Pero ganan ko ikaw magtagad sa mga gamay na sala sa kasing-kasing pod. Can I use the word tagad? Deal with, magtagad? Can I tell you the rest of the story about my friend John? Remember I asked him, John, why? I, John, I don't understand. Here's what John said to me. Here's what he thought. Here's what he said. He said, I'm fed up. Sumul nako. I said, what do you mean, John? What do you mean, John? He said, my roommates are hypocrites. He said, John, what are you talking about? He said, my roommates, big pakarong ingnong jud sila, nag pakarong ingnong sila nga naigubas sa Diyos, nga naigubas sa iyong mga tao sa ministry, they pretend they want to serve God, but I know the truth about them. I know what they do in the boarding in the dorm room. I've seen it. And I can't take it anymore. What? So you went and got drunk? Because your roommates are hypocrites? I'm sorry, I don't understand that. I had some hypocritical roommates in Bible college. They were the wickedest people I ever knew personally, up close. They were wicked. I mean, they should not have been in Bible college. The things they talked about were filthy. It, they were wicked. But should I quit serving God because they're hypocrites? Should I become a hypocrite because they're hypocrites? Listen to what I'm about to say right here. My good friend John, his decision to go get drunk, it didn't happen in one day. It happened after months, are you listening? After months of wrong thoughts. Comparing himself, convincing himself, I'm the only true Christian in this room. They're hypocrites. I am righteous. Do you know what you call that? It's called self-righteous, and the Bible calls it pride. Self-righteousness cannot garbo. And when you start, watch now, for months he compared himself and let himself get more and more upset. I'm like, John, couldn't you just ask to move to a different room? That's what I did. I changed rooms. He said, nope. For me, it's 100%. Either 100% for God or 100% sin. What are you talking about, John? I'll tell you what happened. 
he had allowed wicked thinking to control him for so long he could no longer think clearly. It didn't happen in one day. It happened over months of wrong thinking, wrong feelings. Thoughts of comparison, thoughts of pride, thoughts of excuses for the sin that he was thinking about committing. Mga alibay para sa sala na planohan niya, iplano niya. Watch now. He was so blinded by their hypocrisy that he could not clearly see his own sins in his heart. Let me warn you something about hypocrisy in others. Listen to me right here. You say, Pastor Mike, I know some hypocrisy in our church. Welcome to planet Earth. If all the hypocrites at Truth Baptist Church left, there would be no one here. You say, Pastor Mike, you preach about sin and you're not perfect. Yup, that's true. So some of the sins I preach against, sometimes I'm going to do with them. Not because I want to, but because I'm human. And if you're not careful, you can allow hypocrisy in others to destroy you. Do you know what Jesus said about that? Matthew 23, read it sometime. Si Jesus, nag-estoria sa mga tao, kabahin sa mga tikpakarong ingnon, ng mga pangulo sa Israel, the leaders of Israel, the scribes and the Pharisees, he said, you're right, they're hypocrites. They preach the Bible and they don't obey it. Now that's a true hypocrite. A true hypocrite is someone pretending to be something they're not. A hypocrite is not someone who's trying, who sometimes fails. Are you listening? We could say that's hypocritic, hypocritical. And maybe in a small sense, but they're not a hypocrite if they try and fail. A hypocrite is someone who's not trying, pero nagpakarong ingnon sila nga nagsulat. That's a hypocrite. These people were living wickedly. They were getting rich. Nagpahimulo sila sa mga pobres. Parang sila mahimung dato. And Jesus said, here's what he said. I know they're hypocrites. But if they're telling you the word of God, obey them. That's what he said. He said, they sit in Moses' seat. As long as what they're telling you is God's word, you still have to do it because it's my word. Do you know when Christians get upset and end up leaving the ministry? When they start focusing on people and stop focusing on Jesus. There will always be hypocrites. There will always be hypocrisy. There will always be people who struggle and make mistakes and perhaps truly are hypocrites in some way or another. But Jesus is not a hypocrite. Kung ang mga tao mag-disappoint ni mo, dili ka na ang sayok ni Kristo. John, my friend, allowed wrong thoughts to destroy him. You don't have to do the same thing. Not convince us in Kogulingo na ang ilang tikpakarong pagpakarong ingo na ang alibay para sa doubt ang salat sa pagpagpagpagkahubo. Here's the message this morning. Listen to me. If we as God's people will allow God to work on the small sins of our hearts, we won't ever have to worry about the big sins in public. Did you hear me? Kung kita mo tugo ang balang espiritu, magtagan, mag magtunok na to, mag-adjust na to, diya sa kasing-kasing, dili jud ta kinala magkabalak ka kabayan sa mapangahason na sala. You'll never get there if you let God work right here. So can I ask you a question? When was the last time you said, God... Is there sin in my heart that I need to change, fix? Na ba sa lahat sa akong kasing-kasing na kinahanglan usbon na ko? Kinahanglan mga ayaw o pagpasailo? Kinahanglan pag-a-adjust? 
Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. So see ako, Diyos, o kibaloy ang akong kasing-kasing. Sulay ako, o kibaloy ang akong mga unahuna. Can I ask you a question this morning? I have not preached about specific sins this morning. Maybe a little, but not much. Is there something right now the Holy Spirit is pricking your heart about? Not by... But sa lahat sa mong kinuboy o karon ang Diyos na tunog ni mo, kinin mo yung potara. Garbo, pedalo, kasuko, pagtande, kinin ang problema. Sa'yo pang imong hunuhuna. Would you let God search your heart? Kung kita mo tugo siya mag-ati man sa problema dali sa kasing-kasing, dali dyan tamo abot dere. On every head bowed, every eye closed.